and uh, thank you for joining us uh, today for a word from Scripture. And before we pray, I want you to pray for a friend of ours, an evangelist, David Burton. David has been with us se several times. If you'll remember, he was the former state evangelism director in Florida for 26, 27 years, did a great job, and for the past several years has been in full-time ministry uh, as an evangelist. He's been here twice and will be our evangelist of the Lord Terry's in April 2021. Uh, God has opened up a tremendous door for David to do some television, uh, and uh, it's uh, called One Way with David Burton. It's about to get serious and get underway uh, in a regional setting in the Arkansas area, and David asked me a while back to be one of his board of directors, so uh, we're just looking forward to a tremendous time. If you have any questions about that, go to David Burton Ministries uh, online, and you can see how you can even help uh, as he continues to uh, take these steps of faith and sharing the gospel over the airways in a, in a wonderful way. Uh, some of you will remember, he's the one who, who gave us the dot and introduced us to the E-Cube. And he is just an equipper, trainer, uh, and does a great job. So pray for David Burton Ministries, if you will. All right. Also, I want you just to bow your heads with me in prayer. And as we pray, uh, I, I would cover your prayer for a family here in Camden uh, who lost a 41-year-old son and father of several children. Uh, I will do his memorial service tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock. So I, I would ask that you would pray for me as well as you, if you would. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you today for being the God of a new day. As the sun rose this morning, we are reminded that we've got another fresh start. We can, we can begin anew as we trust you and ask you to forgive us of our sin and to help us. I pray for everybody uh, that is watching and listening that you would just touch their life and they would know how much you love them. So God, help us as we go forward, as we open your word here for a few minutes. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, some things that I am going to start to implement uh, are beginning tonight uh, at 7 o'clock. Uh, I'm going to offer a Zoom uh, Bible study, and uh, some of it's going to be contained uh, to what I am going to share with you right now. But um, the question has been asked, Greg, will you continue to do the online thing? And the answer is yes, because not everybody will, will be able to do the Zoom or have access to it. So I'll do the best I can, all right? Sometimes I get a little late. I can download them to YouTube, and our YouTube channel is FSB Camden, and, I, and I'll forget to download it to the website. So sometimes when you see a little delay, it's because we're, we're just trying to, to cross the T's and dot the I's. So uh, just bear with us and we'll do the best we can, okay? And I hope that you're enjoying the, the Second Coming series and maybe more so being challenged by the Second Coming series. This Sunday, I'm going to deal with Babylon, uh, that great city that's going to be restored and, and, uh, and, and then once again defeated. And then we get to chapter 19 next week, the second coming of Jesus Christ. So I hope you'll be uh, in prayer, and those of you that can make it, you'll be here. Those that are home, we pray that you're safe and uh, continue to join us and hang in there, okay? This, this stuff's going to pass. I put a note on the sign that said, uh, outside on church sign, what's behind the mask? And then below it, I put the statement, Jesus is the cure for spiritual distance. He's the answer for spiritual distance. And, uh, you know, we, may, we might be socially distant, but that doesn't mean we have to be spiritually distant. So uh, continue to pray for those that are hurting, those that first responders, those in health care. And we thank all of you for the great job you're doing, even here at church. People like Brenda Fowler, who... Uh, during the worship service, uh, continues to clean the bathrooms for us as people come in and out. I'm grateful for that. And, and Jay and, and Kathy and, and Donna continuing to keep the facilities uh, in great shape and Caden doing the mowing. And I'm just grateful for all the little things that you all do uh, for the glory of God. Last night, 
um, served probably well over 200 meals to the community and uh, pray for uh, Shauna Keener who's recovering from some eye surgery yesterday and I understand it went well but their kids Jacob and Rihanna led the meal last night so they did a great job and uh, I, I'm proud of John and Shauna for training their kids to step in and lead like that. So uh, God has been good. Amen. Let's keep on for the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have your Bible, I want you to go to the book of Deuteronomy. Okay? This verse came to me this morning as I looked at some devotions and Jerry Vines had commented on it. And I thought, I'm going to look at that verse. And it's found in Deuteronomy chapter 33. Uh, there are only 34 chapters in Deuteronomy, and um, this is toward the end of Moses' life, and it's, it's a final blessing. Your Bible may have a margin or a chapter heading that says Moses' final blessing to Israel. Well, when you get down to verse 24, he now is, is blessing uh, uh, Asher, the tribe of Asher, and as he blesses Asher, he says, Asher is most blessed of sons. Let him be favored by his brothers. Let him dip his foot in oil. Your sandals shall be iron and bronze. And then here's the statement. And as your days, so shall your strength be. King James says, as thy days, so shall your strength be. Well, we could just stop right there and preach that message. As your days. Whatever you're going through, wherever you're at in life, whatever stage you're in right now, wherever we are as a church, wherever we are as a, a believer, as your days, so shall your strength be. So I just need to be reminded tonight that regardless of what the world throws at us, regardless of what the headlines say, God will be our strength. He will be our source of strength, our refuge and our strength. He's the light of our salvation. He shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Not mine, but his. Amen? And I, and I praise the Lord for that. Uh, so when you get to chapter 34, it's, rec it's the recording of Moses' death. The Bible says, Then the Lord said to him, well, Let me back up a little bit. At the beginning of chapter 34, the Bible says, Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo to Mount Pisgah, the top of Pisgah, which is right across from Jericho. Remember, Jericho would be the first place the children of Israel would, uh, would take as they went into the promised land. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead as far as Dan, all of Naphtali and the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the south and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of the palm trees as far as Zoar. Uh, so God shows it to him. And the Lord says to him, This is the land which I swore to give Abraham. Remember Isaac and Jacob back in Genesis? I will give it to your descendants. I have caused you to see it, but you should not cross over. You should not cross over. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his grave to this day. Back in our Holy Land trip, they shared with us that God had a plan because had Moses' grave uh, been uh, uh, found in a place where they would have created a memorial, Moses would have been worshipped. Moses would have been worshipped. So God made a way. Now here's my question. Here's my question. Why, why did Moses not get to go into the promised land? All right? Now, 
there's, there's a reference to it in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse Oh, that's a good that's a good flow of message uh, teaching, isn't it? Uh, there's a reference to it in in Deuteronomy um, chapter two that uh, that Moses uh, Moses was paying a price for something. Well, my question is, what was he paying the price? What cost him from being the one who would lead the children of Israel? I mean, after all, he was the one who who went to Pharaoh and, and, and took all the heat and by faith trusted God and, and, and was mocked and ridiculed, but then God, God delivered them and, and the Red Sea crossing and, and the people are starting to buy in now that, that Moses is God's leader. God has his hand on Moses. Well, what happened? Well, what happened was that Moses made a bad decision on the journey. And he made a bad decision on the journey in his leadership and trusting God. You know, there's, we're prone to do things that draws the spotlight to us. You know, we've got all these new lights, these theater lights in the worship center, and, and they've been a real blessing, and, and they really light everything up nice. And, and, and I notice that when the spotlight is on me, I, I, I like just them red. I, I don't... I don't like the spotlight on me when it comes to everything about the church. And, and when you see me acting that way, you draw, get my attention. Because that's not godly shepherd. That's, that's a celebrity trying to, to be famous. God forbid us when we get to the point where we want the spotlight. Everything we should do should, and, and this, is, this is said by so many people uh, that, that it's almost like a cliche right now. Uh, make much of Jesus. But that's really what we want to do, to make him known. You'll say, well, Brother Greg, he is known. Hey, not, not by everybody. You know, David Burton uses this, this uh, sign-off in his stationery. It's only good news if they hear it in time. It's only good news unless they hear it. So we are called to share it. So what happens at Kadesh? Well, disappointment, uh, disappointment led to 40 years in the wilderness. So, so what happened uh, in that previous 40 years? You ready? The Bible says uh, they got to a place where there was no water. So they gathered together uh, against Moses and Aaron. The people weren't happy. Moses dealt with that a lot. Uh, any pastor, any leader, any coach, any teacher knows there, there are times when, when you're wondering if anybody uh, is behind what you're doing. There was no water for the congregation. The people contended with Moses, meaning they took him on. And they said, if only we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. And they were talking about those uh, who, were, who died on, on the trip. Okay? Why have you brought us up, the assembly of the Lord, into this wilderness that we and our animals would die. Why? Because there's no water. And why have you made us come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? You delivered us for this? So Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly of the door of the meeting. They fell on their faces, and the glory of God appeared to them. You know, don't you love the fact that God shows up when you need it most? He hadn't abandoned them. He, he was just looking for desperate heart to trust him. To trust him. Then the Lord said, Take the rod, you and your brother Aaron, gather the congregation together. Here it is. Speak to the rock before their eyes. If you have your Bible open, circle the word speak to the rock. And it will yield water, and you shall bring water for them out of the rock and give them drink to the congregation and their animals. God said, here's the plan. Go ahead. Execute it. There are no more directions. This is it. So, so Moses took the rod as God had commanded. And the Bible says in Numbers 20, 10, And Moses and Aaron gathered together the assembly before the rock, 
And he said to them, Hear now, you rebels. That's interesting. <laughs> Could you imagine a preacher getting in front of his people that were giving him a hard time and saying, Hey, you rebels. <laughs> he goes, here now, you rebels, must we bring water for you out of this rock? Okay, there's the first warning. Must we bring water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with the rod. And water came out abundantly, and the congregation and the animals came to drink. Maybe at this point we're thinking, amen, God provided, way to go. Moses, great leadership. Remember when I said circle the word speak? Moses struck the rock twice and water came out abundantly. You say, well, God blessed. Yeah, God supplied the needs of the people. But verse 12 says this. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, because you did not believe me, to hallow me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Um, part of his message, folks, was, was, was his delivery was the problem. Must we, remember, you rebels, must we, must we. Uh, he had taken the people's eyes off of God's provision into what he was doing. Sometimes in church life, we want to do a bunch of stuff but we're, we we're, we don't be we're we're not we're not right with God ourselves. You can't lead if you're not right with the Lord. Uh, uh, there's not going to be something supernatural happen if we're trying to lead in sin or, or or just go go through the motions with no confession and repentance and we're not reading our Bible and we're not praying. Man, if we want to do that, we we need to get into corporate world. And just work bit work for business. Um, I like what uh, our preacher friend Terry Fields used to say. There's no business like soul business. And because of their disobedience, listen, because you did not hallow me in the eyes of the people, you you shall not. Here's here's the price. You shall not bring this assembly into the land which I had given them. The price for the simple act of disobedience of striking a rock instead of speaking to it cost Moses from leading the children of Israel into the promised land. And that is uh, what I want, want you to take home with you tonight. The simple acts of obedience God's looking for in men and women and teenagers and boys and girls. He's not looking for superstars. He's looking for obedient and faithful followers. And my prayer tonight is that you and I will be those people. Amen. If, if you're watching this and you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, wherever you're at tonight, you, you can do that. You can just simply in your heart call upon him, Dear Lord Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. Please come into my heart and save me. I recognize you died on the cross for me, that you shed your blood to pay for my sin. And by faith, I receive you right now as my Lord and Savior. You may be a Christian and, and you're thinking, you know what? I, I, Brother Greg's right. I haven't been faithful in the simple things and I need to be. Why don't you ask God to forgive you where you're sitting or or uh, uh, gathered right now, ask God to forgive you and cleanse you and help you to be that faithful servant to obey him. Lord, as we go tonight, thank you for your word. Thank you for Moses. And Lord, thank you for the hard truth that uh, he had to learn through your love. And thank you that there was a Joshua who was ready to take the reins to lead the children of Israel. So God, as we conclude tonight, uh, I ask that you would uh, just go with us wherever we're at and that we would be reminded of the words that were spoken to Asher. As your days, so shall your strength be. Thank you for being our strength in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You all have a great night. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday.